I am unashamed. What about you? Welcome back to Unashamed. We um, so so I had one of the worst experiences of my life yesterday. I mean, oh wow! I, I mean, it was well, bad. You look. I know. I looked the same, right? I left here yesterday, so I had to get an MRI done. Oh man! And what is nobody that? really explained what to, it's, it's. Some it's a. Um, they look inside your body. It's like a, what's what it? Magnetic resonance imagery. Is that right? So they many, look. Many rousing. <laughs> well, here's the problem. They like a so computer I, I, generated view. It's a your... bit, it's a huge machine, and there's a hole in the middle of it, and they put you on a stretcher looking rig, and you go inside the machine. Here was the problem. So I had this, I had one done on my knee a couple, three, four years ago, but just my knee went in there. So it was uncomfortable because you have to lay there for so long, but you know, it's like you can handle anything for a few minutes. You taught me dad, you can handle anything for 30 minutes, right? So, but this rig, I went all the way in there and I'm very claustrophobic. I, I, did, I wouldn't like it when I was young, but as I've gotten older, I don't like to be hemmed up. I don't like to be in the back of a rig. I don't, I don't like to be pinned in an airplane on next to the window. I don't either. So I, I don't like that. And uh, <laughs> so I'm sitting there. I said, wait just a minute. Just, you know, and then they're hooking stuff up. I got an IV. I got this, that. So they're like, I said, do I, am I going all the, all the way in? My head's going in that machine. And she said, well, it'll be out a little. I said, a little. What, what do you mean by a little? <laughs> Because because a little is big right now because I'm not sure I can go in there. Well, a head is not that big. Exactly. So they they roll me in there, and I was, I was freeboard from about my nose up was it. I mean, from the mouth down to the rest of my body is in a machine, and you have to put in hearing protection because it sounds like about 10 men with sledgehammers and jackhammers inside the machine the whole time you're in there. That's the kind of machine I stay away from. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it funny. was barbaric. I, I mean, it I didn't sucked up into the. <laughs> but here's the thing: so they gave me a little emergency button. <laughs> so I got that in one hand, and it's an odd thing because I'm in there, I'm sweating, I'm praying, I'm thinking of beaches I've been to. I'm, I'm doing everything I can, and I'm thinking 35 minutes. That's what they tell me. <laughs> That's how long this is going to last. 35 minutes. And here's the sad thing. I I gave them a check for seventeen hundred dollars to do this to me. I mean, like seventeen hundred dollars. Wow! I paid them to do it, and wow. so about halfway through I, the button, I, I'm, I've got it in the position. I, I'm thinking I got to get out of here, but I thought I've paid all this money, and I and then you know I need to find out what what's going on. <laughs> The magnetic. So, so I just wrote it out. Is the but it never got any better. Yeah. You know, you think at some point it's like going to get better. No, no, I wouldn't it, have thought it would have. It done. never got better. It just like how, how long? How long was the whole experience? Thirty five minutes. Well, let me read 35. to you what it says: MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. Okay. It is a non invasive imaging technology, <laughs> and it's true. Except for the IV I had, there was it was non-invasive. Well, you're giving me a picture of being invaded. <laughs> this is non-invasive. It's, it, 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 I it's, felt it's, invaded. It's mentally, emotionally. It, it was invasive. a mental problem, there's right? A, Physically, you're just laying there. It's, I mean, a, there's a picture that I'm looking at that looks like some sort of weird carnival ride. Yeah, that you like go into a dishwasher <laughs> instead of just close the door. You just go into a dishwasher. <laughs> well, Lisa so, went with me. And so I walk out. What did they say this little endeavor is supposed to do for well, me? Well, I'm going to read it. It is often used for disease detection, diagnosis, and treatment monitoring. It, it produces three-dimensional It's a way to look inside your body at organs. In detail. Right. So they were looking at my prostate because I'm having some prostate issues. So they were looking there, and she told me, she says, it's about the size of a golf ball, so don't be moving around. So now it's like... You know, you got to lay perfectly still is what they were telling me. And so I did it. I, I made it. Like, after it was over, I was glad I did. But I was, like, you know, sweating and dizzy. When I got up, I was, like, it was miserable. When I walked out in the waiting room, Lisa was sitting there. <laughs> she said, she said, are you okay? 
<laughs> and I said, no, I'm not okay. This That's one of the worst experiences I've ever had in my life. And she was like, well, do I need to? I, I said, no, just give me a minute. Who recommended this deal? This was our urologist that you and I share, Dr. Murphy. So they wanted to take a look. They're trying to make sure I don't have cancer. You know, when you start having issues with prostate, first thing they think it may be cancer because a lot of people get prostate cancer. So, you know, I don't know what they're going to find out. But I know one thing. I don't think I could go back in again, for one. At least not awake. I think I would have to be on some kind of drugs or something because that was brutal. It was it was tough. So, I mean, what was the diagnosis? Could you share with the unashamed nation? Well, or you, I don't know. Like you know, it takes a week before they get back. So, hopefully, it's yeah. all clear and then we're good to go. But you well, know, I'm so. reading an article. L M R I. How to minimize your fears? Okay, good. And I wish look, I I wish I had brought this up yesterday. Whoever this is, he posted this article. They say some of the uh, practices that they're using now because. Patients have claustrophobia. Yep, that's me. Is patients may be able to watch a short video with soothing nature scenes to help them relax <laughs> during the exam. Did you have that? I don't think that would have helped. I, they had some music. They had the ear. I had I had ear protection in, and then headphones on. They were playing music. I was listening to yeah. one of the local radio stations. But it just didn't get better. I, I mean, and here's but here was the guilty part of it. I thought we just did a podcast. Oh, no fear. I kept thinking about everything we talked about on the podcast because we don't have to worry about death or anything. So I'm laying there thinking, why is this so bad? Like, you know, I'm praying, Lord, just you know, remove this whatever this anxiety I have. You know, help me get through this. And He did because I made it for 35 minutes. I mean, I didn't bail. But it was the hardest thing I've had to do in a long time not to hit the button. I, I mean, huh. if you hit the button and they send you back in, do they recharge you? Do you is it what? Oh, that was, no! I'm sure that money would have been gone, and then I'd had to do it again at some point. But another seventeen hundred. That's exactly right. Watching nature videos. I mean, it just just didn't work out for me. But anyway, so I don't know how your afternoon went. But that I was, was just wondering, hearing your story, where Jace got that shirt. <laughs> Uh, I can get you one for Christmas. I mean, it's, it's birds. It's, 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 it's on that. Well, on that subject, I will tell you. Scary. That's Looks a heck like of a I will tell this you. A tiny hole in the front. So, so are you. Well, the fact that, that gets you're... the award for segue transition. Oh, that's a segue. You just hey, can you up when town, there's not boy? a segue, you just force one. Yeah, you up town, boy. Y'all come up with some. What do you mean? Oh, like, oh my well, god! Well, Number one, feel the fact that you're noticing my fashion, or the lack thereof, is frightening. But I, I will tell you the story. So. I mean, it's got birds. <laughs> I, 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 it fish, is very busy. With hook. I, I don't know. I haven't ever seen a shirt. Do you want to? It's that very busy. Peripheral <laughs> things you can think about. Do you want me to explain this shirt? Yeah. What's what? What? What made the hole in the front of it? It's a tree, and now it's got a hole. Somebody cut it out with a pocket knife. I don't want to cause anyone to stumble, but this. My shirt it does, does have a hole in it. Does have a hole. It has in one it. over here too. Yep. There's another one right there. Is this like a? It's like a. Is it an old shirt? Just it wore the hole in it or what? No, it's, I mean, I've never see seen it before. It's brand new. I will and, say that when you when, when oh, I will say when you old. took off. If if y'all will let me <laughs> tell the story, but go ahead, Zach. Let's get all the I lead just, up. Well, in. I mean, it, it, I will on. say to Phil's credit, when you took off your jacket, I, th I thought, what's he got on there? <laughs> like, I, I it was it was noticeable uh. enough that like I I had a. A moment where I was like, "What's he wearing there?" So I mean, I didn't notice, and I didn't well. notice it because I was reliving my trauma <laughs> from yesterday, yeah. and everybody else can't get off of Jason's shirt. I should have so, worn that shirt yesterday. So I was on the way to the airport to go film an episode of the Treasure Hunting Show, and I realized that I didn't have a shirt with a hoodie on it. Because when I go to an airport, you have to have an exit strategy. I'm going to have to take my earphones off to show you the exit strategy in the airport. So Jace can't hear us now. I can't hear well, y'all. You can hear me. You can't when hear When I go now. in the airport and do this, <laughs> no one knows who I am. 
<laughs> now, I will say that you do draw a lot of security when you do this. Yeah, you got a Unabomber look there. People come up there and say, uh, sir, do you need something? But they just want to have a conversation with you. So I said, you know what? I'll stop at the honey hole, support these guys, because they're less than a mile from the church building. You, you know. That's John David's family. Yeah. So, yeah. so Who's the on guy, our sister podcast. Yeah, the, from the, the duck, duck car room. Yeah. So, yeah. He actually works his there now. Dad? His dad. Yeah, yeah, his dad. And oh, he works there, too. He, he left up. These are brothers in the Lord, you know. I went in there, I was like, 50 bucks? Wow. But let me support them. <laughs> so what had happened was I used it in the airport, and then I was going to do, on the episode, it got colder or whatever, so I was going to wear this shirt. Well, the producers, it had a big, uh, what do you call it? It had a Name tag. logo. Name yeah, it had a logo over the shoulder, but I wanted to wear the shirt because it was comfortable. And so I I took the name tag off, which is why I got two holes on both oh, sides, even though it's it's brand new. They didn't mind me supporting it, but they just didn't want a big logo every time you look at me. And they're like the honey hole, you know. It just yeah. out, of, out of context. Yeah, but you know, anyway, I got you. So uh, so I destroyed the shirt, and I don't know. It was on the top row <laughs> of my shirts today. Well, I was we did say, laundry you, yesterday. Were you a bachelor, but Missy's actually home, so well she just she she did the laundry and it was on top, and so I just got it. It's a lot it going on. on. I didn't I know. See, I see baits. I see bass. Wow, well, it birds. makes me think of my happy places. Yep. There's cranes. Big there's trees. A, there's a jig that you would throw by a tree. There's a large mouth bass. It's it's a fishing. Mm-hmm. The the store that I went in that they own. It's a uh, bait and tackle. Yeah. Shop. So that's the story on it. <clears throat> I've actually had quite a few people say, cool shirt. Yeah, it's, it, so, it's, But I'm not wearing it because it's cool, <laughs> which it is cooler than most shirts because I have two big gaping holes in it, which there's a story there. I didn't really say cool. He was just perplexed. <laughs> Phil, do you think it's cool? Would you wear it? Would you wear it, Dave? Nah, it's a little much for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a little too busy for for Phil. So while y'all were, uh, I mean, you could put on the back of it, kind of bring it out. You know, there's a lot to be said here. <laughs> yeah. there's, that, there, there's a lot going on here. And let them look at How that about shirt. this? How about this? Put on the back of it. We're all busy. We're all That's busy. Right. That's right. <laughs> So if y'all want to order one of these shirts, I'm sure, I don't know if the Honey Hole sells online. I kind of doubt it, but uh, they might. I bet they do. I so, bet they do. This is like the we small. Got charge, <laughs> we got the charge for this, Jay. Somebody knows that to tell you, man. Lengthy, what, what, I mean, well, let me tell you lengthy, something. Lengthy, uh, what's the word? The lengthy is, is the, the sight and all because I've never seen a shirt with all of that on it. So I thought. Well, it's really made an impression on us. <laughs> yeah. This is the first time we've ever talked about clothes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a break. Jace, I've been on the road a lot this month, and I'll tell you what I'm missing, my Helix sleep. You know what's fascinating is I had to take a quiz to get my Helix bed, and I was a little nervous about it because I'm, I'm terrible in testing. <laughs> But I got that 100% right because the questions were just how I like to sleep. And and you're you know, good at that. I'm good at that <laughs> once I get down. And I've learned the key to sleep is to ask yourself a question. Is it just about sleep or is it about sleeping well? There you get into the Helix mattresses. So, and Jay's, I can concur because I went to, to uh, biblical school with you. Not so good with the testing, but good for Helix. Uh, they offer 20 unique mattresses, including the award-winning Lux Collection, uh, the newly released Helix Elite Collection, and a mattress designed for big and tall sleepers, which is good. And also they have one just for kids. Uh, your personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge, and you get to test this new mattress out right there in your own home with a 100-night trial and a 10- to 15-year warranty to try out your new Helix mattress. 
Uh, everybody's unique. Everybody sleeps differently. That's why Helix has several different mattress models to choose from. Models with memory foam layers to provide optimal pressure relief if you like to sleep on your side, which I do. Models with a more responsive foam to cradle your body for support in your stomach and back sleeping positions. Plus, you get cooling features because some people sleep a little hot at night. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash unashamed. Use the code HELIXPARTNER20. This is their best offer yet. It won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Um, what well, Zach, speaking of product placement, um, I just wanted to thank you because when I was up at your place back for Layla's wedding, we talked about the Smithy cast iron on the podcast and someone that works there is apparently a listener. And so I just want to thank you for a nice new Smithy that I got. Wait, uh, wait, wait. Hold yeah. on. <laughs> so gonna, just thank you gonna, for that. Thank you to the folks at Smithy. We do have a problem. <laughs> if you work at Smithy and you sent one to Al. Uh, Zach and nobody me else is stealing uh, his, but okay, they reached to, out to me. So I didn't know that. thank I you for the, and it is a tremendous skillet. I'm in love well, with we it. Well, we need to charge them. I mean, it is a great product. It and is a great product. Hole, by the way, just for our friends. Don't go to the honeyhole.com. That's a sandwich shop. If you want to buy the shirt that Jace has, it's honeyholeshop.com. Ah, honey so they gave, them, gave them a free, uh, JD, if you're listening, I will send an invoice to you in the next 48 hours. <laughs> That's so. right. Well, let me tell you this. Uh, I'm sure the first 10 will get one of these shirts because this is, this is kind of a hole in the wall place. Yeah. So if you spend... If too many of you go there, you know what's you know what's interesting about the honey hole, the the location Jace is talking about. When we were young, Jace, you may be too young to remember this. Oh no, it was a Seven Eleven. It was a Seven Eleven, and that's where we would stop because it's the last civilization before we got to out to where we we're going to hunt. When we used to drive up to where you hunted at Moss Lake, it was also right next to a. Uh, was it a root beer place? Yeah, A and W root beer. A and W root beer, and we used to get the you know, come ice cream through. and yeah. get the get the root beer on root top beer of float. Ice. Yeah, Did so you, and then there's a there's a skating rink by there, right? Yeah, Maybe it's just a bowling alley. Yeah, there it's just a, alley? there used well, that, to be a bowling alley, but it burned, burned down. Yeah, that burned. But but this uh, the, what's interesting about that Seven Eleven is. I used to be car sick when I was young, but I didn't want to get weeded out of hunting. So I would never tell anybody that I was sick. And so when they went into the store, into the convenience store, I would go around back and throw up mm. and then come back around. And I never told you, I never told you that because I didn't want to get weeded. Yeah, I know. Cause I didn't want to. And the smell of that would cause me to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> Which I do have a vivid memory. So yeah. it was a chain reaction. So Jace knew about it. <laughs> that is kind of ironic. So while y'all were uh, having MRIs and wondering about what I was wearing, <laughs> I was reading our text and I was enamored. I mean, we talked about this last podcast in, in chapter 24, this scene, this road to Emmaus. But it's very profound when he runs up on or i don't know who ran up on who here you know in yeah. the, on the road to emmaus they were talking about everything that happened in verse 14 and as they talked and discussed these things with each other jesus himself came up and walked along with them so i guess jesus made the initial encounter and since he vanished instantly i'm assuming he just literally came up behind him and I can just imagine all of a sudden being right in between them. Probably spooked him a little bit. Yeah. And then it says, but they were kept from recognizing him. Yeah. Whether that was by him or, or something they just didn't see, or as we, we talked about that a little bit. Well, we did talk about Jesus obviously looked different. I mean, yeah. Mary thought he was the gardener. Uh, there's some other examples. Um, well, Thomas, I mean, Thomas, uh, didn't fully recognize him. I mean, and he, he had the ability to show his wounds. And I, I'm not is, assuming that no, no. Is, uh, on the on the on the uh, fishing trip, it said they didn't know it was. Yeah, him. that's Remember right. They, when he was on the bank. Yeah, on the bank. That's where that's John twenty. John twenty one. Twenty one. Yeah. Go ahead, Zach. Which, which I mean, I, I mean, I I love that though because you I mean, you start thinking about the the he was able to show scars. It, 
it i mean this was a physical resurrection we have to keep that in mind i mean this is there was something physical and tangible oh, yeah. i mean he, he had a body this is not um, yeah because i grew up i grew up thinking that you know the resurrection i don't i don't i don't know i guess i thought heaven was like floating spirits or something yeah. and trying to imagine that was honestly a little depressing but well, there's a lot of a lot of the religious worlds that still believes that it's a spiritual resurrection not a physical one but that's just not biblical i mean we've talked about that at every level you know what's what's interesting uh at the end of acts after reading you know jesus has gone into heaven in the first part of acts each chapter of the gospel of john these people who put this book together contains a portrayal of some aspect of the character of work or, or of work for Christ. And listen to this. These are the things you, you'll catch in the book of Acts. Son of God, about the, the, Jesus is that. Son of man, divine teacher, soul winner, great physician, bread of life, water of life, Defender of the weak, light of the world, good shepherd, prince of life, king, servant, counselor, true vine, giver of the Holy Spirit, great intercessor, model sufferer, uplifting savior, conqueror of death, restorer of the penitent, of the ones who repent. For an individual, for someone just to look and see what the book of Acts says about Jesus more than anybody who ever lived on planet earth. Yeah. Mm. I mean, sure. that, I mean, out of everybody's league. Yeah. How, how a guy or two over a period of thousands of years came up with that would be impossible. Yeah. Unless it really happened. This is exactly right. Which, by the way, Dad, since you were there, that is the thesis of this new book that will be out March the 12th. I could be wrong, but I doubt it. Why Jesus is your greatest hope on earth and in eternity. That's what this book is about. Yeah. Everything you just said. Yeah. Who Jesus is and why he is. Yeah. And I didn't look at it when we made put the book together, uh, uh, Gordon and me. So... I mean, we put that book together, but I mean, it's worthy of note. If you just, yeah. it, it'd be impossible for someone to say, "Oh, oh, there was not, never anyone like, here like that." I said, "Not here. There's more evidence of Jesus being here than anybody who ever lived." Yeah, and then you have a whole list of names that you know describe who he is and what he's done. It's a, yeah. it's just it's just outrageous things. It is. By the way, I could be wrong, but I doubt it. dot com is where you go to pre order. We'd love to have you pre order the book, so check it out. So anyway, <laughs> so Jesus is having this conversation, and these guys, Cleopas and a friend, their faces are downcast, and they're like, "You haven't heard what's happened." And he's like, "What things?" Jesus is playing along, and they they were talking about Jesus who they're now looking at, but and said he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. We had hope, but we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel, which is an interesting term, that redeem, because it, it's like to bring out from under mm -hmm. slavery. Yeah to be liberated, but they were thinking political, yep, physical. They didn't realize that they're talking to one who redeemed the globe, past, present, and future. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place, which I do think we didn't make this point before I tell you what I was studying. If you have everything but the resurrection, there's sadness. It just shows you right here. They said, oh, he was powerful in word and deed. He... So they were acknowledging everything. But if you don't realize there's a resurrection, it ends in sadness. Yeah. So in addition, uh, some of our women amazed us. They went in the tomb early morning, and they didn't find his body. They came and told us 
that they had seen a vision of angels. And then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they didn't see. So then Jesus says this, that says, uh, you know, you're slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer? And then verse 27, and beginning with Moses and the prophets, he explained to them <clears throat> what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. So then when you read, uh, he says that same thing again after the appearance to the disciples in 44. He said, this is what I told you while I was with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. So I was kind of looking into that. I was like, I wonder what exactly he told them about that. Because it's kind of like a cliffhanger. Yeah, I would have liked to have heard. I, I just know this. that To this day, the Jewish people are still struggling with this. Exactly. A, a great degree of them. They're still struggling with the same thing that was written that Luke wrote down. Right. They, they, they to this day. But they're still looking so, for Messiah. Hey, let's take another break. So everybody in the unashamed world knows that Phil is very famous for not having a cell phone. Yeah. In that fa- makes you famous? Uh, well, well you're, you're the only man I know without one, so... And on multiple occasions, Phil, you I have, just heard what was on it, and I said, "Yeah, I'm out." I don't want well, that. I think why you became famous is when you're taking thousand dollar phones, which you didn't know they cost a thousand dollars, and no you're idea. you're <laughs> chunking them in the river. Well, you know, the kids are crying, hollering, but you were doing a good thing, good thing. But there can be some good things that come out of a wireless. Well, oh. most of us, the rest of us, especially those around Dad, have to have one to be able to do business. Uh, so what we need is a good carrier, and Patriot Mobile is that carrier. They're the only Christian wireless provider, um, and they still offer dependable nationwide coverage, giving you the ability to access all three major networks, which means that you get the same coverage that you're used to, but you don't have to fund causes that you don't believe in. When you switch to Patriot Mobile, you're sending the message that you support free speech, religious liberty, sanctity of life, Second Amendment, and our military veterans and first responders, which we love. Their 100% U.S.-based customer service team makes switching easy. You get to keep your number, keep your phone, or you can upgrade. Uh, Their team is going to help you find the best plan for your needs. Here's what you do. Go to PatriotMobile.com slash Phil. Or you can call them at 972-PATRIOT. You're going to get free activation when you use the offer code Phil. Join us in making the switch today. PatriotMobile.com slash Phil. That's PatriotMobile.com slash Phil. Or you can call them at 972-PATRIOT. So I'm getting to a point here. but So you remember in John 5? Because it led me to this scripture in John 5. When he's having this argument with the Jews, and he says, you diligently study the scriptures. This is 539. Well, what scriptures is he talking about? He's not talking about the New Testament or the Gospels, because that wasn't written yet. So so what is he talking about? What scriptures is he talking about in John 539? What the prophets said. The Old Testament. Testament. The Old Testament, the Pentateuch, the, you know, Moses' writings. Because you think that by them... You possess eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me and have life. Now, what I didn't realize when I'm studying this is that this is a big controversial debate because a lot of people say that Jesus is nowhere in the Old Testament, to my shock, but that's a thing. Hmm. And so when it gets down to verse uh 45, and I don't know what we were doing when we were studying John, but I don't even remember getting into this conversation in detail. But when he gets to 45, it says, But do not think I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom your hopes are set. If you believe Moses, you would believe me. Now, here, here's this little phrase that got my attention. For he wrote about me. Hmm. 
But since you did not believe what he wrote, how are you going to believe what I say? So, as an average intelligence or slightly below average human being, I said, well, let me just run over there and see what Moses said about Jesus. (laughs) Well, it's not as simple as you might think. Now, I did find there's a passage in, uh, now look, I didn't have notes on this, so I was talking to Zach before our podcast started, and I said, I'll I'll go over what I studied, but I didn't write any notes. But I think it's Deuteronomy 18 and 32, you know, where Moses said, there's a prophet that will come from your people, and he will basically redeem redeem us. So I'm pretty sure that's talking about Jesus. But this study led me to a doctor, a a theological scholar, who had written a book called Reading Backwards. Are you familiar with that, Zach? I have not heard of this. You you had briefly mentioned it. I was like, yeah. So so let me just give you the spill, and we can talk about it. And because it's something we all believe, but we didn't know. You know, there was a book about it. Obviously, he called it figural theology and his point is well hold on before you go any further can someone do that cricket sound because if i were if i were to say that what you just said (laughs) Mm -hmm. we want to be consistent here there would have been i just want to keep it fair jace go ahead so (laughs) now we have have now cricketed jace this is quite the irony (laughs) is that we have a simple man pontificating (laughs) on a theological subject that our theologian, <laughs> Zach, has never heard of. That's right, and has cricketed you. <laughs> but if y'all are playing along with me from the simple-minded, I just was trying to find out what these quotes are when Jesus said, hey, he wrote about me, and he and he's explaining to these two men, then he's doubling down with his disciples saying, look, all that that was written, it was about me. So the reason this scholar came up with this term is because let me just give you a practical, because look, I, if you're going to listen to his speech, and he gave a lecture somewhere that said, did Moses write about Jesus? That's the name of the speech. But, but I just want to warn you, if you want to go listen to that, you must either take a nap before <laughs> or drink coffee as you're listening, because this is, this is theological talk. It's dense. It's this is very dense. difficult to sit there and not let your mind wander. Should I have listened to that while I was in the MRI machine? Maybe that would have taken my I mind. Think that would have put you to sleep. <laughs> but I listened to it for you, and I was just curious. And, and I'll try to make it practical, because here was his point, and we've said this before. So let's just say he didn't say this. I'm just I'm I'm going to try to make this where we can all understand what his point is about figural theology. His point is, let's say you started reading the Bible from Genesis. You know, you most books you start at the beginning and you start reading. Right. Well, all of a sudden, you get to Luke 24 here and Jesus emphatically says three different times here, all that stuff back there, that was about me. So what do you do? Well, you think, oh, no, I must have missed that. I got to start over. And that is his point. His point is that the concept of Jesus coming, now we obviously know where the obvious prophecies are, but in the case of like Moses, and he didn't say this, but he inferred it, well, Moses kind of mirrored what Jesus, what what he did for Israel, liberating them from uh, Egyptian slavery, mm-hmm. was was like a forerunner to what Jesus would do. An archetype for, is what they call it. Yeah, for the world. But look, so so what his point is, even though Moses didn't have that necessarily in mind, when, once you read what Jesus did, well, you go back and it what he called it was a aha moment. And I'll give you one example that he gave that I thought was fascinating, if I can remember it, because it was pretty deep. So, because it was from here in Luke 24. So, when you see these these two fellows, so they're downcast, and look, they're they're seized with fear. Would you, would that be a correct 
statement, kind of like the fear you were experiencing on the MRI. Yep. Oh, yeah. And so what happens is their eyes were opened. Uh, when were their eyes opened? Well, verse 36. Well, twice. Uh, no, verse, verse 30, 30. 31, and then again in 45. Eyes were open, they recognized him. 31 was when they recognized him as Jesus. So he used this for as an example uh, on this figural theology, which I thought was interesting. He went to 2 Kings chapter 6, and y'all are familiar with what I'm fixed to read. Oh, yeah, you're talking about the... Well, yeah, but yeah, Al, it, it, it was it was uh it was it was eye opening, pun intended. So this was Elisha in the servant. Yeah, yeah. Second, Second Kings six. six. Yeah, find find that exact where that happens. Uh, Jason have a saying, and it's called "Home Sweet Home." Do you understand yeah. that, Sam? A financial advisor once told me that no matter how you lay out your plan for where your money's going, you always need to allot some money for fixing up your house. And so I thought he was just hustling me. <laughs> but now, 30 years later, it's not if your house is going to have a problem, it's when. <laughs> I mean, right now I have a leaky foundation and I've tried to fix it three different times and it's resulted in me having to redo my son's bedroom three times. So, Jay's, if you had only known about one of our sponsors earlier, it's called American Home Shield, AHS. Uh, they can protect what you don't expect, like what you're dealing with, a leaky faucet, faulty water heaters. Um, appliances break, uh, so but you don't have to break the bank. That's the key. You get to choose a plan that works for you and your budget, and then it's simple. When a covered item in your home breaks, contact American Home Shield, and their trusted and qualified pros will fix or replace it based on the coverage limits in your agreement. So go to ahs.com slash contracts for all your coverage details, including your limit amounts, your fees, your limitations, and your exclusions. Right now, our listeners can take $50 off. You're saving money by checking them out. Go to ahs.com slash fill to save that 50 bucks. ahs.com slash fill for $50 off any plan. American Home Shield, protect what you don't expect. See ahs.com slash contracts for your coverage details, including limit amounts, fees, limitations, and exclusions. So they're surrounded by an army. Elisha, man of God, he's trusting in God. Y'all can help me go through this since I didn't have the notes. Yeah, I just read this this week. Yeah, the, the, the Arameans have trapped them. Arameans have trapped them. So verse 15, the servant of Elijah, of, of the man of God, got up and went out early the next morning. An army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant says, don't be afraid. The prophet answered, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed, oh, Lord, well, here's this phrase, open his eyes so he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. Which, here's what's fascinating. That's the only time in the entire Old Testament you see something quite like this, mm -hmm. where eyes are opened, and you see the spiritual heavenly forces around. Well, it doesn't stop there, because as the enemy came to came uh, toward him. Elijah prayed for the Lord. And look, look what happened. Strike these people with blindness. Because you got to remember, the whole reason they didn't recognize Jesus, but back to Luke 24, is why. Y'all said it multiple times last podcast and this, because they were spiritually blind. Right. So we have an irony happen because now the servant has opened his eyes can s to see the spiritual, but the army is now stricken with physical blindness and so Elijah said, this is not the road, and this is not the city. Follow me, and I'll lead you. Uh, so so they take all these guys prisoners because they couldn't see. In verse 20, after they entered the city, Lord, open the eyes of the men so they can see. Then the Lord opened their eyes, and they looked, 
And there they were inside Samaria. They were basically prisoners of war. So when the king of Israel saw them, he asked Elijah, well, shall I kill them? Shall I kill them? And verse 22 says, do not kill them. He answered, would you kill men you have captured with your own sword or bow? Set food and water before them so that they may eat and drink and then go back to their master. So he prepared a great feast for them. And after they had finished eating and drinking, he sent them away and they returned to their master. So the bands from Aram stop raiding Israel's territory. Now, if you read that story and you kind of look at what Jesus did, Jesus, in a nonviolent way, went to his death on a cross. He has this feast pictured of many times. You know, they recognized him when he's at the table. That you know, they bring in the fire when it says their hearts were burning. And the the movie Chariots of Fire, you know where they got it from? Was the Second King Six, and so there's multiple what he called echoes in the two stories. And yeah. I I agreed with him. I was like, well, isn't this fascinating? And so so that's what the theology is. Yes, and it's not it's not figurative. It's it's uh, it's not figurative. Yeah, that that's where well, I was getting well, off. What what, I, what, what, what what was the term again? It was figural. Fig, figural. Figural what, meaning I guess uh, the figure of Jesus is, is that what he's talking seen about? Seen throughout. It's, the figure of Jesus is seen throughout the Old Testament. Well, I mean, let me just listen to this, though. I was, as, when you read that um, verse 45, which says, Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. So you read that, you think, man— why would he go to the Old Testament to talk about that? And 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 I love this because he'd already said this once before about um about the law and the prophets and or about the prophets and Moses, but but here he's linking it to some somehow he's linking this whole like Old Testament scripture to something happening with all the nations. So I just I just looked this up. I mean, I a, a lot of verses came to mind, but let me just read a few of these from the Old Testament. About so, and you think about this. You're reading this now in the light of this revelation that Jesus is doing. So, I think what he did right here is he's going back and probably going through a lot of these verses I'm going to read. And then when they when they read this for the when they read it in the light of Jesus, they're like, oh, that's what that meant. Because think about if you're Jewish in this time period, what is your expectation of the kingdom? Your expectation is that Israel will be the kingdom, like Israel itself, and I don't know about the rest of the world. I'm sure maybe they, maybe they benefit from it or whatever, but you're not really seeing any in their mindset. There's not really the inclusion of the rest of the nations. But listen to all these verses in the Old Testament, and there's a lot of them. I'm not going to go through all of them. Genesis 12, 3, I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. All peoples or all nations on earth will be blessed through you. Genesis 18, Abraham surely became a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. Genesis twenty-two eighteen, 18, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Genesis 26, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give them these lands. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed. Genesis 28, 14, all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. Exodus 9, uh, but I have uh, raised you up for this very purpose that I might show my power. By the way, this is quoted in Romans 9, too, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Joshua 4, 4, he did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know the land, uh, or the hand of the, of the Lord is powerful. So that you, and, and this just goes on. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. I mean, there's, I don't know how many verses, are, I couldn't read them all in this podcast of how many verses there are in the Old Testament that are proclaiming that all the nations are going to be blessed through the obedience of Abraham, through the grafting in of the gen It's all throughout the Old Testament. So when Jesus gets to the New Testament and and he's proclaiming this new kingdom that we're being grafted into, when he goes into the temple and he gets angry and he turns over the tables, what was his accusation? You've taken this house that my father intended to be a worship house for the nations, and you turn it into a den of robbers. So I think that's what he's getting at here. That's why he says here that, that the repentance 
for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name. Why? Or to who? To all nations beginning with Israel. So when you get to Romans, that's Paul's point. The gospel is what? First for the Jew, first for Jew, first in Jerusalem, then for the Gentile. It begins in Israel, and then it expands into the entire world. And I think that's the. this is what he's opening their mind up to. So then they go back and they read it, and they're like, how do we miss this? Because <laughs> this was here the entire time, and yeah. we missed the biggest point of the whole thing. We missed it, but now we, we realize it in Jesus as he opened their eyes up to understand it. Yeah. So let's uh, take another break. So just one point I was going to make, just to, you know, in my simple mind, of course, the, the theologian didn't bring this up, but this helps me kind of wrap my head around it. In 1 Corinthians 10, you remember, we've read this many times, but, you know, Paul uses this as an example when he said, I, I don't want you to be ignorant that our forefathers were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. You remember when he led them out of, out of uh, slavery and the parting of the Red Sea, and then they made it, and then the enemies that were following them were destroyed when the sea closed back up. And so as they go out to the wilderness, they all ate the same spiritual food, drank the same spiritual drink. Remember the God providing for they, uh, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them. Well, then this, when Paul makes this statement, he's doing what this theologian was kind of, you know, calling a theology, but it says, and that rock was Christ. So, and you remember there, I looked them up. There's, there's, Three instances, two or three instances, where because one time he struck the rock and water came out, but when he struck it twice, after after God, no, once he talked to the rock, once he struck it once, and the other example he struck it twice, which he got in trouble for striking it twice, right? And because that obviously was representative of that Jesus died. Once and for all, yeah. and which is what kept Moses out of seeing the promised land. Right. So when you think about it, here's these three stories. You can go back and read them. I, I found it fascinating. You know, it's like the rock was Christ during that, the living water. So then you look at all those passages that talk about living water and and salvation. And even Christ. all the even because Moses was the mediator of the original covenant. And he's the one that brought in blood when they couldn't keep the law because then they had to have sacrifice. He's the one yeah. that instituted the Passover, which, of course, is Jesus. I mean, it's over and over. Even Moses' arrival, remember, it was under the same exact circumstances as Jesus. There was a king killing all the Hebrew babies, and he survived. So it's it's there's a, a ton of links to, to this and then even and even like when you get to the beginning of of um, Mark, for example, and it talks about the baptism of Jesus, which is I guess in all the Gospels. Um, even in that, like the you think, man, what like the the significance of the I think I may have mentioned this on a previous podcast, but of Jesus being baptized in the Jordan River, you know, when when they were coming out of captivity, they there was that parting of of Jordan, which you know when they came when they were escaping the captivity of Egypt, there was the parting of the Red Sea. Yeah. Moses was the the forerunner, he, but he didn't get him to the promised land, but he had to hand that over to Joshua. And and then the other time there was a parting of the of the Jordan River was when we just talked about Elijah and when he transferred power over to Elisha. Yeah. And they the 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 sea parted in the presence of God in the form of the Ark of the Covenant. You know, the, all those stories of from of how that happened. But the idea is that Jesus now, like, like, so John the Baptist is the forerunner handing it over to Jesus. So you see this throughout all of the New Testament. There's so much of, of, of this that's, that, that's echoed. I guess it would be a backwards echo into the Old Testament. So that, yeah, that's yeah. The, it's a backwards <laughs> echo, but it's like, which that, is, I think, maybe the point of reading the Bible backwards. It makes Well, that's why he, he wrote a book. Called reading backwards. Yeah, I haven't read it, but I, I am going to order it and read it. But we we've said that before. It's like when when some a new Christian or someone 
is like, how do I understand the Bible? I always tell them, start in the Gospels and then go backwards and forwards. And then my point is, is because of what Jesus' point here, he's saying, beginning with Moses, the prophets, he explained to them what was said in the scriptures. And then when he said, I told you while I was with you, everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms, which I was just trying to to bring up the idea that that, those are quite the statements. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you you know, I didn't want to just run over it and say, because when you like read Hebrews 3, the first six verses, where he talks about why Jesus is better than Moses. But he also is using references, the Hebrew writer there, that Moses was looking to the future in what he was doing and saying. Well, who was the future? The one that's better than Moses, which is Jesus. Go ahead. Well, yeah, I was going to, I was just thinking, you know, I'm glad you brought up Hebrews because that's exactly what I was thinking about. Of That's kind of the point of Hebrews. I mean, it's, you get to the it end. It is of, the point, yeah. Yeah, you get to the end of Malachi and you're like, and there's 400 years of silence, but even without this 400 years of silence, I mean, you kind of thinking this ain't going to work. <laughs> How's this going to work? And the point of Hebrews is, yeah, that was never going to work. It's impossible for the blood of goats and bulls to to really curate any payment for sin. I mean, that, I, I, that his whole point is to show how it was. It's not to say that that system was wrong. I think that's the wrong way of looking at it. It's to say that if you think that that was the end of that system, then you missed it. It was always pointing. It was all that system was was great. It ushered in what God ultimately wanted to do in Jesus and what he did do in Jesus, by the way. But it, that that's the point of Hebrews that it had. There was no other way. It had to be this way. That's what Paul says in Galatians there. If, if it could have come from another pathway, it, it would have. But it didn't because this is the way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through me. This is the this is the, the pathway. It's there's no other uh, uh, other way we could do it. Which by the way, is that isn't it ironic that the four hundred years you were talking about in between waiting for what was promised to John the Baptist introducing Jesus was the same amount of time that when the verse you read in Hebrews twelve about Abraham when he God made that promise to Abraham, guess how long it was before they would actually go into the land that he promised Abraham? 400 years. I mean, yeah. it's, it's just, again, the similarity, it's all there. I mean, the pieces yeah. of it are all there. But that's why the Hebrew writer, when he got to chapter 11, he goes through all these great people of faith. and he, I mean, all the people that Jesus just mentioned that he explained to to, to share that they were pointing toward him. The Hebrew writer does the same thing. And when he gets to the end of that chapter, he's like, these were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what it promised. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. And then where's he, what's he start talking about? Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, yeah. the author and perfecter of our faith. I mean, that's how this was planned to work. And that's how it did work. So you can call it whatever you want to, but Jesus, the the whole Old Testament is the fact that he's coming. Yeah, and yeah. you have to, and when you study the Bible, you always have to keep this in mind. You're reading snapshots of where things were in that time. It's like I've been studying Psalms here lately, and it talks so much about the law, you know, meditating on it, loving it. Have, and, you know, from our perspective, after all this time, we're like, well, the law is really, I mean, we know now. You nailed that to the cross. Right. And it was like, but in the time that the guys were writing the Psalms in David's day, all they had was the first five books. They just had the Torah. So that's well, Dave, all they had was the law. Yeah. Well, David himself, you say, well, where? how does that point to Jesus? Well, he was, a, he was an unlikely king. That's right. Because of why? He was the youngest, and he was a yeah. shepherd. Yeah. Well, there, yeah, there's this scene, there's there's this scene in the Old Testament where um, I just I, as you're saying this, I'm thinking like this really should illuminate the entire Old Testament for us because even like there's these stories that we read that seem a little bizarre, maybe if you don't understand the cultural context of them, or insignificant, maybe, or like they're just like historical points, but we, but we're missing it, like. Another example of this is in, I think it's in Genesis 15, where Jesus, or where uh, Abraham is having a conversation with God. He's made this promise to him, I'm going to give you descendants, I'm going to give you the land. And but, and he's like, how do I know that I'm going to get the land? And, uh, and he says, go get some animals and then cut them in half and basically put them 
you know, on each on each side of a pathway. And and the custom was that you you take the animals, you cut them in half, and then both parties have the agreement, and then they walk through these dead animals that are cut in half. And what they're saying is, should I break this covenant? Then this may this happen to me. And so you can anticipate in this moment that that God is basically saying, we're going to make a covenant here, an agreement. We're going to walk through this, and we're going to make a deal. But what happens is is he cuts the animals in half, and Abraham actually falls asleep. God causes him to fall asleep and he never walks through the animals. And the only one that walks through the animals is God himself. He comes through in the form of a a cloud of smoke or, or like a smoking fire, but God himself goes through. So the, the idea is God makes the covenant and he says, Abraham, should you break this covenant? May this happen to me, which again, who's he talking about? Talking about, Jesus. talking about Jesus. It did happen to Jesus. It's, a, it's all throughout the Old Testament. I think it will illuminate us. I think Jesus was illuminating the disciples to it. And now we have that hindsight 2020 where we can benefit from that same opening of our minds to understand the scriptures in the light of Jesus Christ. Yeah, that was the attempt. All right. Well, we're out of time. Man, that was interesting. Um, we'll uh, we'll dive back in here uh, next time on Unashamed. I do want to mention that uh, we don't have overtimes anymore, but we do have new cooking segments that actually dropped today, uh, February 12th. And so we want you to check those out. Uh, what, are you, what are y'all cooking, Al? What's what's on the menu? Uh, I'm not exactly sure which is the first episode. I know we did a, a – Dad did a duck gumbo with Burley. Uh, Lisa and I did some – Gumbo. Cornbread. Maddie, Maddie has cornbread. spoken. Oh, gumbo. Gumbo. Okay. Duck gumbo. So you're going to love it. BlazeTV.com slash Robertson. Maddie, did you eat some of that gumbo? What about it? Thumbs, Thumbs up, up from Maddie. From Maddie. All right. Worth the watch. We'll see you next time on Unashamed. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.